Hello, thank you for joining me. Many times in my life I have been told not to be silly, but right now I'm on the Isles of Silly. Right, no more silly jokes in this video. This is St Mary's, the largest island on the Isles of Silly. And in this video I thought we'll explore parts of the island, just sort of see how far we can go really. The main bulk of the island is that way. I'm currently here at one of the many bays on the island. This is the south coast up there has what's known as the garrison um, it was one of the most advanced castles probably to be built in the UK built against um, a potential invasion so as you can see I'm now walking up off the, this very sandy beach and I thought I'll start by walking from the south coast to the north coast we'll see how long that takes um, because it's not many places you're probably going to do it as quickly as I can I'm not running I'm not trying to beat any records um, anyway, we'll see how close it is. So there we are. That is the south coast, heading up here now into Hugh Town. So Hugh Town, if you like, is the capital of the Isles of Scilly. This is where most people live. There are cars here. Um, and later on, if we go down here. So we now enter the streets of Hugh Town. There is also, not too far from here, a mile or so, there's Old Town, which would have once been you know, the main um, capital of the island, but we'll see that when we get there. So if you walk down here, we're just heading towards the main town square. So this is the centre now of Hugh Town. You can see you get a lot of subtropical plants growing here. This is very pleasant. This is centre square. There you go, look, there's a signed sign post. Interesting, we've got two two signs pointing to where there's toilets, which is handy for anyone to know. I've got myself a map of the island, so that's going to be very useful. All these plants everywhere. And you get a little bit of traffic jam occasionally. Uh, most of the roads are single track, but you can't exactly drive around here very fast. So, um, oh, by the way, we probably are more than halfway between the north and south coast. Um, where is it? Not quite yet. We're, we are nearly there. So once I've shown you the north coast, I'm then going to walk off into the island and see what else we can find. So we come to the end of this little square. There's lots of cafes and shops in the uh, centre of the island. Now we're just coming along here where the Union Jack or Union flag it's proudly flying, oh, it's getting a bit windy, so I'll just have to shout. I've almost got, got us to the next coast. I just want to make the point of how quickly we can do this. Um, I'll just show you that there. There's the local Catholic church behind me. And here we are. We've made it to the north coast. So, what was that? I think that was like three minutes we've done that in. See a helicopter over there coming from the airport. We'll have a close look at the airport next block. Uh, the tour goes with it. You get a really nice view of the bay. There's the boat. It's just coming from Penzance. And up on the hill is the Star Castle. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to go and explore a bit more of the So, with the sea just behind us, we're now coming into the other end of the town. Here is the local Methodist church. We'll have a look in here and then we'll have a look in the two Anglican churches is my plan anyway. This is the Methodist church built in 1899. Let's just go in and see what we can see. Um, I understand this is now, oh, uh, Methodist is the most sort of popular religion on the island. Here we are, that's very nice. Probably with the exception of that screen, most of this church is pretty much as it would have been, apart from perhaps a few speakers and microphones. It's nice to find a Methodist chapel, yeah, because so many of them have been converted into various other buildings. So to find one sort of exactly as it was, we can go upstairs, go up to the balcony, and we'll have a look down on the chapel through here. Upstairs. And um, 
Oh yeah, here we go. Look at that. Imagine you're coming in here to listen to a long sermon. Of course you've got the sound of the seagulls outside. On a rough day you'd be able to hear the waves as well. This is inside the local Methodist church. Stained glass window behind me. Uh, what I'm going to do now, we'll go back downstairs and we'll go outside and I'll show you where the Anglican church is, which is just up the road. Hopefully we'll be able to have a look in there. Seems on the whole churches tend to be open, which is always very nice. Get to, it's yeah, interesting. A little uh, book here that says what's Methodism about. But there's a picture of Mo Cop Folly, which is in Staffordshire. So I don't think I've ever made a video there, but it's a really fascinating place to visit. So that's Mo Cop Folly in Staffordshire. Didn't expect to find a picture of that here on the Isles of Scilly. Let's go outside again. As we come out here, and uh, I think uh, we should be able to see. Uh, the uh, there's a wall there, and um, the Anglican Church is literally just up the road, just up here. So, um, yeah, so that calls a very friendly little whisper. Hey, there look, there's the Anglican Church. Let's go and have a look at that now. I'll just go up the hill a little way. Here is the Church of St Mary the Virgin, the main Protestant church. St Mary's, a bit windy out here, let's go to the side. There we go. Nice smell, a mixture of flowers and candles. So this is where um, you know, most of the, of the Protestant population come here on a Sunday. And then looking back that way, there's the organ up there. So, as I said, this is like the main church for the Protestants in the town centre. I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to head towards the old town, and we're going to go and find a much older church. There's the church where we were a moment ago. I'm just walking, as I mentioned, to Old Town. I'll show you something just down this alleyway here. There's a, a big chimney. This is the island's power station. Now it's not where it gets most of its electricity from. It is now connected to the mainland, but should that get cut off, they've got some diesel generators here so they can power up the island from here. Prior to being connected to the mainland, this is where all the power would have come from. So this is the, the power station. I'm gonna continue on to Old Town now. I've now walked over the hill and I'm um, walking down this little lane towards the old church. If you think you can hear the sound of children playing, you might just be able to hear that in the background. That's because just over there is the Five Islands Academy, the main school for the Isles of Scilly. So the children who come from the other islands, such as Tresco and Bayer, they have to board down in Hewtown, but that's where the school currently is. Ahead of me, up there, that's the old church, which we are gonna go and have a look at. We're just gonna have a look in this uh, rather pleasant cemetery here. Look, look at that overlooking the sea. It's, it's quite hard to get away from the sea when you're on the Isles of Scilly. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna go in here. I want to show you a grave of a famous person who was often mistaken for being a resident here. They actually weren't. They just spent a lot of time with this grave here. This is the grave of former Prime Minister Harold Wilson. So it says he was the Prime Minister from 1964 to 1970, and again from 74 to 76. And then um, I understand he resigned in his second term, but I hadn't realised he was Prime Minister um, with another Prime Minister in between his two terms. He didn't actually live on the island. He, he really liked it here. He spent a lot of time. He had a holiday home built here, so he regularly came to visit here. But I understand he actually died on the mainland, but then was brought here to be buried. His wife, Gladys, she only died as recently as 2018. She's also buried here. She did come and live on the island. So she effectively was a resident, but Harold Wilson just spent a lot of time here. Let's go over there now and see the old church. And this is its um, cemetery. Interestingly, the new church didn't appear to have a cemetery. So I'm assuming the ground around it, there wasn't a lot of land around it, but it probably wasn't consecrated. So I think um, going by what I saw in the next part of the cemetery, there were a lot more modern graves. These graves are very old 
And these are people that died over 100 years ago. So I think anyone who passes away now on the Isle of Scilly probably is going to end up in this cemetery. Uh, the old town is just over there. We'll have a look at that after we've looked in the church. And up on the hill above the old town, that building, you can see that's the airport terminal. So that's the Isles of Scilly's airport. That's one way you can arrive here. I came by boat. This is the, the old church. I understand it was once a much bigger church, and what you see is just the top end of the church, so there'd have been more of a cruciform church out here. As I say, there's the old town and the bay over there. Very interesting cemetery, look how it makes its way right up up there. Uh, let's have a look at the old church. I saw there are two doors, the second one, not this one, that one is open, so that should mean we can go inside. Let's have a look, see what there is to is this the second this next door we open? Yep, here we go. No one else in here. <laughs> that was the door closing. So, it's a, it's a very small little church, but it's got the, the altar. Um, oh, I see. That porch we walked past the first front door, that's this little bit here. Um, so, yeah, it's not really in sin, huh? So this is is the second church we've managed to find. And there's not many more other churches, if any. There'll be churches on some of the other islands. But this is quite fascinating to see. This must be the oldest church, certainly on St Mary's. What I'm going to do now, though, I'm going to go back outside and we'll walk around the bay and have a bit of a look at the old town. and there was a couple of bird hides. I'm not going to go that way today. My walk yesterday was a bit of its head was over there. So I just came over here and I walked down up to a pub, had a drink and I went up that footpath around the other side of the island. Today my plan is to go up towards the airport and do a much longer walk and just see what I can find really on the island. There's various town, um, cafes like this dotted about and pubs so you can usually get a tea, coffee or beer if you want, um, you don't have to walk far to find one. Let's go and see what I can find on this part of the island. Just walking through a council estate now in Old Town. I'm heading up towards the airport. Um, I've been to quite a lot of airports, but not many of them have I found the access road to be quite like this one. Uh, but it, it is the way, look, uh, there's a, a sign. That just about says airport, so let's go and see what we can see. Interestingly, as we make our way up here, we can see probably one of the um, biggest industries on the Isles of the City. Well, Taurus is the main one, but behind Taurus is daffodils. They grow lots of daffodils here, so that's a field of daffodils. We're gonna go up here now. It's a transport on the island. Well, we, we've seen there's the boat, we've seen there's the airport. There never has been any railways to my knowledge. There certainly isn't any more. Um, I've done as much research as I can. I can't, there's certainly no tourist miniature railways or even to my knowledge, any private miniature railways unless anyone wants to. Uh, if there is and you know, please do tell me, I'd be very interested. But I think it's fairly a railway free place. Um, possibly the most interesting railway free place I've ever been because normally if I go somewhere, I go for the railways. But Funny I should say this, it's actually quite nice to get away from railways for a bit. Now I couldn't do this at home if I thought right I was going to have at home a week off railways because there'd be something happening that I'd want to go and see. It just wouldn't be possible but here there are no railways so if something is happening I can't go and see it so there's no railways. Um, the boat doesn't run all year, that's seasonal. I think it stops in October, it must start up around March, April time. So. In the winter, the only way on and off the island is by um, aeroplane. So it says I've got to keep to the footpath. I'm not sure if that's a farm track or if that's a public footpath. I ought to keep to the footpath. Look at this sign there. You can see the control tower. Um, so yeah, operational aircraft. So from here you can fly 
to um, to Penzance, or well, Penzance rather, and Newquay. I don't think there's any flights over to France or Ireland, so I don't think it's an international airport. But you could, if you wanted an international flight, you could fly and then change. Looking back down across over there in the distance, I can see the chimney of the power station. So that gives you an idea where Hugh Town is. Over there, there's the old town church. That's the estate I just walked up through. I'm going to follow this footpath and see what I find when I get to the airport terminal. So here is the airport. I just went inside and had a look. It's quite fascinating. I didn't really want to film in there, but there was only me and one other person. And I, of course, I'm not a passenger, so there were more staff than there were passengers. But it does get busy during the season, so I have come here on a quiet day. I had a look. There were flights going to Exeter and flights going to Land's End. So that's where it seems you could go to this afternoon. Of course, that's the control tower on top of the terminal. The runway's over there. Not much going on, but if you arrived here for the first time, you know, what a great view you'd get looking out. I can see in the distance a Hurtigruten um, cruise ship, quite a small one. Down there's Hugh Town. That's where the pathway came up, came out, just in front of the airport. So I'm only about a mile away from where I started the video. All right, then we've got a bit of height. My plan is to head off in that direction. There's a valley with another stream. I was going to explore some of those and really try and get as far away from the sea as I possibly can. Over there, there's a telegraph tower, and I think that's the highest point on the island. Um, so just go and have a look, see what else I can find, really. I'm now exploring one of the inland pathways. Come quite high up on top of a bit of a hill. And it's getting a bit more wooded around here. Completely different landscape, look, lots of pine trees. And then I noticed this sign to a garden. So I think it might be worth going down here to see what we can find. It looks, well, I'm not sure what to expect, but I think it might be interesting. It looks like we're going into a sort of a dell, like a, a dell garden. Um, going by the fact I know you get lots of unusual plants on the Isles of Scilly, I think we can probably expect to see some interesting plants in here. Get through the gate. Shut it again. What is there? There's lots of these garlic flowers everywhere, and there's a, a few bluebells. And oh, wow, look at this. We sort of open out well, basically into a dell. Um, you sit there, a very peaceful place to come into. This is really nice. There's all sorts of interesting trees. Um, yeah, just trees you don't generally see in in the UK. So that's what makes one of the exciting things about going to the Isles of Scilly. So it looks like the garden looks like it makes its way down the hill. I'm excited by these sort of bamboo plants. It looks like, yes, a tunnel into the bamboo. Let's go in here, Let's see where this goes. Oh, it's like a junction in the middle of the bamboo plants. Let's go up here, see if this one goes. And, uh, oh wow, look at this, we come out and it's like we're almost like being in sort of a jungle. It's just like an amazing place of all these different plants. You know, like, like I keep saying, plants you just don't normally see in Britain. This really is an amazing place and I keep coming to the, all these little places you could just feel, you could just sit there, you know, for half an hour or so and just relax and all you can really hear is the sound of the wind and the sound of the birds or flowers we're coming into I can just sort of see little paths going off everywhere little green areas and there's just somewhere to sit in each one of them it just makes it so sort of really nice there's an oak tree here and it's got like um, these lichens growing all over it again not the sort of lichens you so much see in Britain and then you'll get some palm trees and so I'm just walking really. I'm not really knowing what I'm going to find. Just sort of following my way around, seeing what there is. This looks exciting, look. It says bird trail up there. It also looks exciting to go down there. Let's follow this bird trail. Perhaps it means you'd see certain types of birds. I think I've come right to the edge of the garden. Almost in like a sort of 
a wooded area. It's just really nice and peaceful. I can just hear the sound of a lawnmower in the distance. That's like the only man-made sound. It's, uh, so there's a bit of a walk to get here. It's probably about a mile and a bit away from Hugh Town, but it's certainly worth it. There's more of the garden down there. And this path look, just goes through the garlic like this. Sorry, not garlic, leeks, I think they are. Of course, you can't smell it, but I can smell a garlicky smell, but I know what wild garlic looks like, and it doesn't look like this, so I think it's probably leeks. Look at this pinch here. Can't really sit on that one. It's been there. Plants have just reclaimed it and just grown through the bench. So really, what an amazing place. Well, where to go now? Do I... I would go down there, but I've got to fight through those plants. I'm just going to follow along here. This is amazing. And then we get to here, and uh, the path gets quite narrow, whichever way I go. I'm right into a, a wider path now. Oh, look, it's, uh, which way do I go? Which way do I go? It's too exciting. You know, I could probably, you could probably spend a good hour here exploring all of the paths. Oh, I see. If we go down here, there's another oak tree there. I think we're in that little dell above where we just walked here. Yeah, there's those steps I thought about coming down. And look at this, another area where you could just sit and enjoy the peace of being here. Yeah, we were up, up there, up this one then. If I can find my way around to it, I saw a really nice tree, cherry blossom. There's not there's any water in these gardens, but then, you know, gardens are different. Everywhere I look, there's just paths and there's these, you know, just little areas you could just sit. And it appears I have the garden almost all to myself. I could see there was a couple of other people wandering around, but it just feels so sort of peaceful, like I could be you know, completely in the middle of nowhere. Um, let's go down this path down here. We go to another, another little one. Just another little peaceful area. Could sit here. Yeah, sit here for an hour or so. It's not normal. I don't normally say that. I'm normally someone who likes to rush around and, you know, see lots of different things. But here on this island, there's a slower pace of life, and you feel you've got time to really sort of take everything in. Look at all these plants, they're amazing. I mean, I know more about the usual British plants. It really does feel a bit like, well, it is somewhere completely different. It might be part of Britain, but it's not sort of garden. It's not a typical National Trust garden. Look at this cherry blossom above me. It's amazing. It's like there's pink snow everywhere. And that's this path. Yeah, it might be a bit of a dead end, but yeah, cherry blossom everywhere. Mixed in with all these other subtropical plants. I think I've come to the end of the garden onto a little road. It's just paths, roads going off everywhere. There we are. That was amazing and it's free to visit as well. You've just got to be prepared to walk here because there's not, there is one or two odd buses around, community buses I've seen. Um, so here we are. That's, so we've just been exploring this garden and we've ended up here. I'm going to follow the road up there to see what I can find up the road. Stop for a little break at this Longstone Cafe. We've got a cappuccino and a Biscoff waffle. Really looking forward to this. And then I'm going to continue off, off down that road and see what else I can find. I've arrived now at this little hamlet in the centre of the island. And on the map it's shown as being called Holy Vale, which I think that house there is called Holy Vale. I've noticed that sometimes. It says a name of a place, and you find one house is called that. It's almost like the rest of the area around it. So there's not a lot here, just a few quite pleasant houses and uh, more nice plants. My plan from here is to follow a nature trail down towards the sea. So I came down quite a steep hill from that cafe, down another footpath. There's some nice gardens there, but I'm not sure if they are part of people's gardens, so I don't want to just go sort of walking around them. Anyway, I go down here, and the road effectively is coming to an end. But I've just noticed there's a sign. It says Duchy of Cornwall, 
Holy Vale Nature Trail. Like it says, it says it's not an easy trail for walking, and um, you should have you know appropriate shoes on and everything. And it says it's quite um, wet and muddy down here. So, uh, well, let's find out. That to me makes it sound all the more exciting. Even though we're as far away from the sea as possible, there's a boat. Even though I don't think you can actually get any more than much more than a mile away from the sea. From the cafe, the cafe was up on the hill there. I came along the footpath, went along the other side of where those trees are, as I say, down into Holy Vale, and, and now I'm walking along here. The, on the map it shows a river, I can see it's all quite boggy here, so, well I say a river, a stream, we, we saw, if you call it an estuary, a stream flowing into the water when we were down at the old town. Um, so this is what I'm thinking I can do here, is hopefully follow a river. Yeah, I can see what they mean, it is going to start to get muddy, so... Uh, See how I get on, really. Let's go and explore into the woods. So far, it's not too muddy. Uh, the path is slightly raised around me. It looks very boggy if I was to step off the path on either side. I can hear a helicopter taking off, so not only are we never far from the sea, but we're never really far from the airport. So I'm going to follow this path, um, which seems to be sort of held up a with trees each side of it through what yeah feels like a very sort of dense woodland and I'm hoping it will eventually become a stream and like I say let's go and follow this all the way down to the sea. And further along the path it's become even more charming and as I say it's just following it every now and then you get a little boardwalk like that the, you might be able to hear the sound of the water the river is becoming slightly more of a substantial stream just down there. We get to here, there's a little bridge taking us across. This is just like really nice. I've not seen anyone for a while now. I feel like I've really gone away from where the rest of the tourists on the island go. And it's like I'm sort of going through this undiscovered wilderness. Obviously, I know people have been down here, but it just feels like I've really got this to myself. And I wish there were more places like this. It seems everywhere now you go to, it's overrun with, you know, just people everywhere, which is nice. People want to go and see nice places, but it's finding a nice place, which is nice where not everyone goes to. This might be the closest thing I'll get to a railway line. I think I found two old railway sleepers. I expect they were bought in for use on little bridges like this. The stream flows underneath me and off down there. I'm going to keep going, and soon I should make, reach the sea, which obviously isn't very far away. Once again, the landscape has changed. I've come out of the woods, and uh, in this sort of boggy valley, there's another bit of a boardwalk. As I say, I'm going to keep going. Should reach the sea fairly soon. It's very humid now, really quite warm. The Arzili is known to be quite warm in places, but here really hot and humid and there's a nice cool wind coming so I keep saying this I'm going to go and find the sea. I've been following this path for a while now I came across a road and then the path gradually got wider to the point that it's on this boardwalk. Now, this boardwalk appears to be quite new in fact it is very new as we're about to discover and this is also where we discover things don't always go according to plan. My plan was to follow this until we reach the sea. We're not going to be able to do that because the path isn't finished. It continues off down there, looking like some sort of odd railway line. So we're not going to go any further that way. But we're going to head back and we'll go and see if we can find another um, bit of sea to go and look for. So I've come quite a way inland. There's a dog walking along behind me. Um, in some of these areas, these inland roads, it reminds me a little bit of rural France. I think it's the sort of the, the warm air and just just has that feeling really and that's a bit of a coincidence because right now we are in Normandy now I haven't got on a boat and gone to Normandy it's just this part of the island this hamlet is called Normandy so we're here in Normandy just sort of looking walking through I'm now heading to the other side of the island and I'm going to walk down my plan is, and we know things don't always go according to plan, but my plan is, oh, and uh, something I've been told about, and this has to be it, let's see this here, that 
is a railing of Salonian 1. So the boat we saw in the port earlier, that was Salonian 3, that is part of the old Salonian 1, the boat. That, so that's been up and down between here and Penzance many times until it was retired quite a long time ago. So it's since been Salonian 2. We've currently got Salonian 3. I think that's going to be replaced. Now, um, there's uh, various rumours as to what they might call the next boat. Um, but um, the hot favourite, for some reason, I really don't know why, but the hot favourite for the new boat's name seems to be Salonian 4. Anyway, let's uh, keep going, see what we can find. I'm now making my way down here. Let's see if there's another dog following me, although I don't think the dog's that bothered about me. Down these farm trucks, these make up most of the small roads on St Mary's. And I did say we we're going to go and find the sea again. Well, I'll turn the camera around. I've got a really, really nice view to show you. Have a look at this. So, yeah, really nice view. Obviously, I'm quite high up here on the crisps, cliffs. I can see across to St Martin's, and they're known as the smaller islands. So, they're some of the non inhabited islands. The road I'm on, I think, is going to take a sweep down round a bit of a corner, more nice flowers, round the corner and down and then I'm going to hopefully find my way back towards uh, Hugh Town. I've got quite a long way, well not too far to walk as the crow flies, but I've obviously got to find my way back. It is, it, I mean with here you can't go too far, there is a limit to where you can go going by the size of the island, but at the same time I keep wanting to sort of explore all these other paths, so I'm going to have to head that way. It does look very nice to go round there, so that's probably a walk for another day. Let's head in that direction so we can find. So I've made my way down from the cliffs up there, and here we are down at this really nice little beach. Not a lot of sand on it, it's mainly a rocky beach, but just a little bit I'm standing here on. It would it almost feels like it'd be nice to go swimming, but you know, it's not quite that warm. Um, but it just feels amazing to have this beach to myself. There really is no one here at all. So I'm going to find my way back up over the island, back to Hugh Town. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment from a little bay that I've got all to myself on the Isles of Scilly.